Hi there, this is Jason from eRacing Academy and today I'm going to be doing an analysis on the BOP and handling physics characteristics of all the GT4 cars in iRacing. As you know, the GT4 category has been very popular in the recent years and as someone who's racing in the European GT4 Championship, I really am interested in actually trying all the other manufacturers other than BMW on the iRacing platform. With this, I should have a good idea of how all the five manufacturers perform and understand their proms and codes and I'll be driving them on the Hockenheim ring because I'll be racing there this year. Contenders in the GT4 category are the Aston Martin GT4, we have the McLaren 570, we have the BMW M4, which I'm actually racing in real life, then we have the, the Mercedes AMG GT, and we have the Porsche Cayman GT4. So yeah, five different manufacturers, five completely different cars, and I drove them around the Hockenheim ring. I did a handful of laps, I didn't want to do a lot of laps because I basically wanted to understand how quickly I can adopt to the driving style and basically try drive as fast as I can. The lap times I'll be showing you are not the most representative lap times because I did them with the baseline setup that iRacing pretty much gives me initially and I didn't really do any sort of long runs, I didn't do any setup changes and I basically wanted to just get a good understanding of the handling slash the physics of the cars. The way I want to go about this comparison is basically I want to give my feedback on the car's physics slash handling one by one and compare them to each other and then I actually want to put them against each other on some MoTeC data and then you can obviously see which car is stronger and weaker where on the circuit. So I started my run with the, the Mercedes AMG GT. Honestly, it was a very easy car to understand. It was very predictable. The outlap, you do get a bit of oversteer, but it kind of goes away as, as the tires heat up. It's a little twitchy at times, but honestly, I think in terms of braking performance, general stability and handling, it's a very well behaved car and straight away I was actually on the pace and I didn't really want to do many more laps because it actually gave me a very good understanding very early on. Then I drove the McLaren 570. I think the McLaren is one of those cars that has one of the most potential to go the fastest, but I was really struggling to adapt to the, to the driving style and I was, I was really struggling to understand the physics. I actually did understand the physics, but it was very difficult, difficult for me to implement right away. And honestly, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to lie with this. I actually did a second run with the 570 to get a better understanding and actually do a more representative lap time. The 570 was using different gears. That was, that was the only car I actually used the first gear. And with that, I actually was struggling to slow the car down. The, the brake uh, performance wasn't bad, but it felt like every time I wanted to slow the car a lot for hairpins or very slow corners, the front of the car just wouldn't really turn. And I was struggling with this. But once I actually turned those very few times, the front was very balanced and you can actually throw the car around. The car is lively, it wants to go, it's kind of skidding around. It doesn't lose a lot of a lot of speed. It is pretty much a dancing queen on the track, but I couldn't really utilize its performance. So I feel bad for that, I'm not gonna lie, but it's one of those cars you really, really have to understand how to drive to utilize and get the most out of it. After that, I drove the Porsche Cayman. So I think it's the first GT4 in the iRacing series. And even though it's had a few updates, it's a relatively old car. However, I think it's one of those cars you're gonna definitely choose for an endurance race because it's balanced. It's, I like the fact that it has very good traction. You know, you don't really struggle with, with throttle inputs. You can just put your foot down at the exit of corners and you can basically trust the mid-engine car. And with that, I'm talking about balance. It's balance and I, I, I really enjoy actually drifting with the Cayman because I'm not, it's not so much drifting, but you can actually four-wheel slide yeah, and as you study, you actually don't lose any speed. Yes, you do get the typical understeer, as in every Porsche, but it's very, very drivable. So Porsche, for me, is one of those cars you can 
adapt quickly, drive very easily, and I think it's one of those cars you could choose for an endurance race. The fourth car I drove was the Aston Martin Vantage GT4. It was a surprise. It was very quick from the start, and I only did basically three laps. My second lap was the quickest out of all, and it just basically did what I wanted to do. The, the steering wheel was very crisp. Surprisingly, the feedback it gave me was a little heavier than the other cars, but it was very responsive, and I could attack uh, the corners and the mid-speed, the, the, the mid-corner entry, and the handling and the stability was very good, which gave me a lot of confidence. And after I did that second lap, I was like, you know what, I don't actually need to do a, more, a lot more laps because this gave me a really good understanding. And if I did do a few more laps, I think it would have put the other cars more to shame. So I didn't do any more laps with the Aston Martin, but I must say it was awfully easy to adapt, understand because it pretty much did what I wanted to do. The fifth and the last car I drove was my racing car, let's say, the BMW M4 GT4. I know this car from real life, and on iRacing, you get a very similar feeling and understanding. And the car is, let's say, on the heavy side. It's difficult to stop and turn, as in real life. I'm, I know my uh, my team director is not going to be happy with what I'm saying now, but. It's one of those cars that gets affected by the BOP most. And even though it's the quickest on the straight line, it's got a very good acceleration, and it, obviously it does gain a lot of time on the, on the straights, you do have that constant understeer when you start carrying a little bit too much speed. And that understeer just continues and continues and just gets more and more. And I'm gonna show you later with the steering traces, I do have to use a lot more steering input. And honestly, even though it's a quick car to drive, but you must know how to drive it quickly, it really makes you work hard. So the lap times were good, but I did sweat a lot. Another spoiler, I had to do a second run in the BMW as well because I really wanted to get a competitive lap time. And to do that, I did have to work quite a lot. So to sum up, the Aston Martin, definitely the quickest and the best handling car out there because I pretty much did the fastest lap time of all five on my second lap. The, the Mercedes AMG GT, good stability under braking easier to drive and I honestly think it's uh, also a one of those cars you could maybe um, choose in endurance race if you can handle the snappy rear at times. Porsche definitely definitely easy easy car to drive you pretty much drive effortlessly I like the fact that you can four-wheel drift skid with it because it's very very predictable the McLaren Yeah, I'm not gonna say a lot because I I basically I'm taking the blame for not using or Optimizing the performance of the car because I think there's a lot to it once you understand how to drive it and BMW It's fast. I'm not gonna lie. It's very fast good top speed Understeery, you can still carry a lot of speed with a lot of steering input, but does make you very tired in the end. Now it's actually time to look at some data and see how it looks on the screen, because you know what we say, data does not lie. Okay, so we have the Motec i2 Pro software in front of me, and I have basically pulled up the Aston Martin lap time. So the, the reference lap time we have is a 146.22. As I said, I could have gone quicker and I could have spent more time, but that was not the aim of this basically video. So Aston Martin is here. Let's pull one of the car's data. And here we are. I have the Aston Martin here, the BMW, the 570, the Mercedes and the Porsche. So. As you can see, I pretty much only did three laps with the Aston Martin. I did, this is my second run with the BMW, second run with the McLaren. The McLaren was consistent, but I was really just trying to understand and find those extra tents. With the Merc, I only did one run, and yeah, my third lap was pretty much the quickest here. Porsche, it took me some time to get some speed, but again, it was consistent, and I enjoyed driving it because it's actually easy to drive. So. 
Let's pull one of the car's data. Let's start with the BMW. So I basically said the BMW was, was quick down the straight. And yeah, as you can see, it has the highest top speed of all of them, 236.2. Aston Martin, 234.9 is one of the quicker cars down the straight. So first corner, second corner, not a huge difference. I can stop the car. Again, in real life, the BMW is quite good on straight line speed and actually braking as well. So when you actually think about it, looking at the data, let's look at the Delta, the variant. So we're pretty much identical until the Mercedes curb corner number eight. And then we start basically coming to the sections where you do a bit of twisty dancing. And this is where the BMW was struggling. And as you can see, I pretty much lost all the time in the last eight corners. And also, like sometimes you yeah, basically let's look at the look at the stadium complex. How much more steering input I had to use in order to get the, get the front of the car to turn. So what I'm trying to say is the BMW does really struggle with tight twisty corners. And we've basically been saying this for a long time. And here's the data. And obviously, we as the Borosan Automotive Motorsport drivers as well have seen this whilst we race against the other cars in the European GT4 Championship. So yeah, in terms of data, we can clearly see that the BMW does struggle a lot compared to the Aston Martin in the tight, twisty sections. All right, so let's choose our next car. Our next car can be the McLaren. Yeah, McLaren's one of those interesting cars. I, I actually like how the McLaren was on the curbs. It kind of was jumping off the curbs, the apexes, but not getting too unbalanced. The stability was there. The, the one of the things I struggled most with the McLaren was actually stopping the car and turning it, getting a good enough minimum speed to have a good exit as well. I, I couldn't honestly suss it out completely. I was really struggling to get good steering angles. I felt like I was using, trying to use too much steering angle, but it just wasn't working for me. And I, 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 I honestly was losing most time turning the car and then trying to get an exit. And as you can see, when you, when you look at the data here, as we are entering the, the hairpin, yeah, I'm losing some time here. And the next corner, number eight, the Mercedes Kern, again, I was losing a bit of time because I just couldn't point the car into the apex. And I'm sure, obviously, with setup changes or a different driving style, you can definitely do this because again and again, I'm going to say it, the McLaren has a lot of potential. And on the last sector, the stadium sec section, it just didn't feel as nimble or as direct as the Aston Martin. So again, I was losing some time compared to the Aston Martin. But you know what? McLaren, good car, but I need to learn how to drive it. All right, next car is the Mercedes. And so straight away, I felt comfortable with the car. I was quick, like in the Aston Martin. And honestly, there was not much difference in terms of handling, but the Aston Martin just gave me more confidence entering the corner. Obviously, when you enter, you, have, you can carry more speed in mid-corner, and obviously, you can get a better exit as well. So, with regards to the difference of the, of the car, I'm not going to say one is much better, but the Aston Martin just gave me more confidence, simple. The, I really enjoyed the braking stability of the, of the Mercedes and it was basically balanced, it's easy to drive. But again, I'm gonna be repeating myself, the Aston Martin was just a more go-kart-like um, car, especially through the stadium sector. And even though sometimes I was using more, let's say, steering angle with the Aston Martin, it was basically still pointing and still turning which obviously is something I really want. The next car and the last car is the Porsche. As you can see with the Porsche, I was actually quick on the second lap as well. Uh, and I was trying to find more time. Okay, so the Porsche was one of the slower cars down the straight. So you l lost a little bit, but not a lot. Porsche was, again, very balanced the one I felt most comfortable on the exits. And as you can see on the data, always the exit of the corners 
I am slightly gaining even compared to the Aston Martin, even if sometimes the techniques are a little different. I really thought that, and as you can see in the data, the Porsche was really good with traction. The only problem I was having with the with the um, with the Porsche was the the slight understeer I was getting in the stadium section. When it kind of starts, it's difficult to get rid of it, but you can still drive, let's say, on top of it. But I really, really felt like if I obviously did a few setup changes, I could probably, you know, mitigate that and drive better. But um, I must say, one of the things I really enjoyed with the Porsche is, and the reason I'm saying I think it's a good endurance car is because the way the car was jumping off the curbs and you weren't losing a lot of traction and the way the car was pretty much oscillating and it had a good frequency and this kind of gives you a lot of confidence and it's one of those cars that won't upset you if you drive on the uh, North Schleife Nürburgring. So well, again, a nice car to drive, just felt slightly, slightly more lazier compared to the Aston Martin. So I tried to basically show all the five cars uh, on the Motec system having the variance, speed and steering angle traces. I hope it kind of gave you an idea of, of how the cars felt and I hope you can understand what I was trying to say. Very important to emphasize that every person driver has a kind of unique driving style or their own driving style. Some are similar, obviously. It's very important and crucial to find the car that suits your driving style most. And obviously you can say that some cars are much easier to drive or some cars are much faster. So it would be more sensible to adopt to that kind of car's style as well. If you were to drive or race in a multi-manufacturer, um, let's say championship, yeah, I would suggest basically going with one of the manufacturers or one of the cars and trying to really utilize every bit of characteristic that is in your favor and basically trying to set up the car that you feel most comfortable and fastest. What I'm trying to say here is don't go around the bush and trying to find a little bit of everything. Just focus on something and maybe once you've focused on something you're going to find out yeah, maybe that's not my cup of tea, I wanna go try something else. But really, it's all about practice and time. So I could say if you race at a circuit that has long straights and just accelerations and just straight line braking, yeah, maybe choose a BMW. Or if you're going to a circuit with a lot of traction required or a lot of curves where you're gonna go jumping, jumping up and down, yeah, I'd probably say choose the, the Porsche or the Mercedes. Or if you're gonna be at a circuit that has a lot of, let's say, tight, twisty corners, yeah, go for an Aston Martin, or if you know how to drive it, go for the McLaren. I don't want to be constantly repeating myself all the time, but you have to be choosing what is best for you. But looking at the data, yeah, I think the Aston Martin has a little edge above the other cars. I know I'll probably get a little warning from my team director, basically not favoring the BMW, but hey, you know, even in real life, such as the GT4 European Series, Currently, yeah, the AMG GT and the Aston Martins are in front, and I think iRacing has done a good job representing that. That's me for today, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please, please press like. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. And if you have any questions, comments, please do write in the below section. And yeah, so I guess we will see you more with English content very soon. Until then, take care and bye-bye.